Hey everyone, and welcome to another Shadowlands beta guide. I'm Mystic, and today I'll be taking a look at what the best legendaries are in PvP, so you know exactly what to expect from each class at the moment you step foot into rated PvP on November the 10th. Now, while you may just be interested in finding out which legendaries are best for your class alone, I highly recommend sticking out throughout the entire video, as some classes currently have some really overtuned legendaries, and knowing what they are is the first step to dealing with them. Okay, so to kick things off, we're going to take a look at the general legendary powers which every class has access to. From this group of legendaries, the only one which is seeing use in PvP is Sephus's Proclamation. This legendary essentially allows you to play with a weaker version of Relentless while still having access to a PvP trinket. The added bonus to your secondary stats whenever you CC, interrupt or dispel someone can also work in your favour if you play around the proc every 30 seconds. It's likely that classes which don't have a powerful legendary on their own will simply fall back on this one. In addition, it may also be the prime choice in matchups with extremely heavy crowd control where you still prefer to play with a Gladiator's Medallion trinket as opposed to a Relentless trinket. Alright, so with the general legendaries out of the way, let's take a look at each class one by one. Note that each class has access to four general legendaries that each spec shares and then four more legendaries for each spec. Starting with warriors, their strongest general legendary shared by all specs is Misshape and Mirror. This makes Sparrowflect apply to their entire team, allowing for a ton of outplay potential against casters that are attempting to crowd control their healer. So if you're a warlock going for a fear on a warrior's teammate, be prepared to play around this legendary. It's worth noting that the PvP talent which made Warrior Sparrowflect stay up for a few seconds and reflect all spells is no longer in the game, which means Misshape and Mirror will only let a warrior and their teammates each reflect a single spell. Next we have Exploiter, which is my personal favourite for armed warriors who have chosen the Venthyr as their covenant. They can combine two Condemns with two Overpowers and then use Avatar and Sharpened Blade for an absurdly high Mortal Strike. So, just be on the lookout for the Exploiter debuff when facing Venthyr Arms Warriors, and you won't be surprised when you get hit for 50% of your health with the Mortal Strike. And to wrap things up for Warriors, we have Enduring Blow for Arms and Deathmaker for Fury. Both work in a similar way, giving Warriors a small chance to passively proc a damage increase on their target. So be on the lookout for random Colossus Smash or Siege Breaker debuffs to know when their damage is about to spike. Next, let's go over the Paladin Legendaries. Uther's Guard is the only general legendary which shows some promise and could potentially be super strong in some matchups. The synergy between Unbound Freedom and Uther's Guard can potentially allow Rat Paladins to have pretty strong mobility in matchups where they're struggling to deal with roots and snares, for example against Frost Mages and Death Knights. And Holy Paladins can combine Uther's Guard with Ultimate Sacrifice for more frequent access to their strongest defensive cooldown. Night Fae Paladins can then take even more advantage of this during their Blessing of Autumn to almost mirror what we saw ineffable Holy Paladins do with their cooldowns in the last season of BFA. There isn't much counterplay here, but it's just good to know that Paladins have the potential to significantly lower the cooldown of their blessings, so you're not surprised when you see two Blessing of Sacrifices come out in less than two minutes. Moving on to the Ret only legendaries, three stand out as being viable in PvP. The one you're likely to see the most is Final Verdict. This is a throwback to the Ret talent with the same name back in Warlords of Draenor. It simply increases the damage in range of their hardest hitting ability, Templar's Verdict, while also sprinkling in a bit of extra damage with a 50% chance to proc a Hammer of Wrath while also resetting its cooldown. So if you're used to easily kiting a Ret Paladin and avoiding most of their damage, be wary as they can still hit you for a decent chunk of damage even when they're not in melee range. A more niche pick which has the potential to be super Super strong when facing Cleaves is Tempest of the Lightbringer. This one's a throwback to the Legion artifact trait, Divine Tempest. The reason why this is looking good is Rets can spec into Empyrean power for the chance to spam out Divine Storms that cleave the entire enemy team. So if you're playing a melee cleave against a Rep Paladin, look out for projected Divine Storms and be prepared to play around them by rethinking your target choice and positioning if you find yourself being heavily cleaved. The final Ret Legendary we'll look at is Badge of the Mad Paragon. This is most powerful for Rets who spec into Crusade that have chosen the Night Fairy as their Covenant. Later on in the expansion, when haste levels get higher, this might allow them to have a 50% uptime on Crusade as the CD reduction from Blessing of Autumn, combined with the Wings extension from Blessing of the Mad Paragon, could leave them with just a minute cooldown on Crusade after it fades. So, if you see a Ret use Crusade, be even more mindful of CCing them throughout just to prevent them from keeping it up for longer than usual. The last Paladin Legendary we're going to look at is Inflorescence of the Sunwell. This is definitely looking to be the strongest Holy Paladin Legendary as it buffs the redesigned Infusion of Light, either further decreasing the mana cost of Flesh of Light or increasing the healing of Holy Light. Not only that, but it gives you two charges of Infusion of Light every time your Holy Shot crits, something that's going to be super valuable in the early season while Holy Paladins have lower crit than they'll have later on. Now there's not much outplay you can do here, but you can at least not be too confused if you notice Holy Paladins are taking much longer than usual to go out of mana. Next we have Death Knights. They've got two general legendaries that both Unholy and Frost DKs might use. Starting with Death's Embrace, this makes a DK's anti-magic shell an 
insanely strong cooldown against casters, especially when paired with Spell Eater. The only real counterplay here is to avoid dealing damage into AMS, unless you're prepared to top the DK and then drop them low again during the same kill attempt. Their second general legendary, which is more likely to see play on Frost DKs, is Grip of the Everlasting. This could allow Frost DKs playing comps like Windwalker DK to grip two players on top of their target to set up an AoE stun on three targets and get off a huge chill streak. There isn't too much counterplay to this other than simply being ready for it in order to effectively position and trade cooldowns. Alternatively, Grip of the Everlasting can be used to grip the same target twice in 3 seconds to counter their mobility. For example, you grip a mage, they blink, and you immediately grip them again. This is much easier to play around, as you simply have to wait for 3 seconds after the first grip before using your mobility. So be sure to look at the DK's buffs to see if they gain Grip of the Everlasting after using Death Grip in order to know what to do. As for the Frost and Unholy DK legendaries, both have one noteworthy one that might see play. Absolute Zero makes Frost Rim's Fury a 90 second cooldown and also gives Frost DKs an AoE stun. This will allow them to set up chill streak goals on their own without relying on a stun from their teammate, making comps like Windwalker DK and DHDK able to set up chill streak goals much more often than before, as they previously would rely on a single stun with a 1 minute cooldown. So, when facing these types of compositions, be prepared to deal with an AoE stun and chill streak go much more often than before. Unholy DKs unfortunately do not get many powerful legendaries. The only one that stands out as being relatively useful is Frenzied Monstrosity, which makes their Dark Transformation a stronger cooldown. Now since Unholy DKs have gotten back Summon Gargoyle as baseline and had a slight rework to their talent tree, it's possible they may want to forego playing with the new version of Unholy Frenzy in order to spec into Army of the Damned. They'll then rely on Frenzied Monstrosity as their haste cooldown. The only real way to counter this is to perhaps be more mindful of killing an Unholy DK's pet whenever they use Dark Transformation. Moving on, Hunters have two general legendaries that are looking quite good. Craven's Stratagem pretty much replicates what the PvP talent survival tactics does, allowing Hunters to free up a much needed talent slot. Call of the Wild on the other hand seems to be their best overall legendary, and is especially potent for marksmanship Hunters who can use it to lower the cooldown of their super powerful offensive, True Shot Aura. So don't be surprised if you see an MM Hunter pop True Shot just 90 seconds after using it the first time. The only other legendary that MM Hunters may consider using is Surging Shots, which increases the damage of Rapid Fire and gives MM Hunters a chance to reset its cooldown with Aim Shot. However, the reset chance seems really low. There also isn't much you can counter here, other than being a little more wary of the damage from Rapid Fire. As for Survival Hunters, they're able to use Latent Poison Injectors, which is based on the staple BFA Azerite trait for Survival Hunters, Latent Poison. So, if you're a class that can dispel poisons, make sure you continue to do so when facing Survival Hunters to prevent them from stacking their Latent Poison to 10 and bursting. Unfortunately, BM Hunters don't really have any strong legendaries, and are also looking quite weak in Shadowlands so far, so there's nothing notable to cover right now. Next up we're looking at shamans. First, they have a general legendary that only enhancement shamans are likely to be using. Ancestral Reminder gives you additional haste while also increasing bloodlust duration on you by 5 seconds. All you need to do is look out for the bloodlust buff and prepare for a slightly longer onslaught from the enhancement shaman or just make sure you purge it right away. Elemental shamans will likely be using Windspeaker's Lava Resurgence. While it is not necessarily game breaking in terms of the damage increase Ellie's get from this, it's still worth keeping an eye on the additional burst they'll have every time they spend Maelstrom on an Earthshock. Ultimately though, it isn't too big of a deal and quite lackluster in comparison to other classes legendaries due to Lava Burst not really hitting too hard at the moment. And finally we have Resto Shamans who have access to quite a strong legendary. Earthen Harmony will make Resto Shamans Earth Shield go a long way to keeping themselves and their teammates alive whenever they drop low. So if you're setting up a CC chain on a Resto Shaman, be prepared for their Earth Shield to heal for a significant amount. You may even be required to bait it onto another target when going for a kill. Moving on to Rogues, they've been lucky to get a handful of extremely strong legendaries that are proving to make rogues one of the best classes. While the spec specific ones are better, three of the rogue general legendaries definitely have their place. Mark of the Master Assassin could be super strong for sub rogues, allowing them to vanish offensively for huge evisses during setups. Night Elves would also be able to melt to gain the benefits of this legendary. Sadly, there isn't much counterplay, but you can at the very least be prepared for huge burst damage every time a rogue has vanish or meld ready. Invigorating Shadow Dust also has great potential, allowing rogues to desync blind with PvP trinkets to make game winning plays. This legendary being in the game simply means you'll have to look out for rogue teams forcing your healer's trinket with blind and then setting up a kill with blind again before your healer's trinket is back. And tiny toxic blades could allow assassination rogues to deal crazy amounts of damage in matchups where they benefit from cleaving. So when facing assassination rogues, be prepared for an onslaught of cleave damage if they opt in for this legendary. General legendaries aside, Akari's soul fragment is proving to be completely broken at the moment for sub rogues. 
Shadow Strike currently hits really hard, which makes this legendary allow sub rogues to deal crazy amounts of burst in just a couple globals. Now you'll see the debuff being applied to you when a rogue uses Cheap Shot or Shadow Strike with this legendary, so try not to be caught off guard when a rogue opens on you and be prepared to trade cooldowns every time a rogue uses Shadow Dance. As for Outlaw Rogues, they've got two really cool legendaries that both help them increase their kill potential. Guile Charm is a throwback to Bandit's Guile from Warlords of Draenor, which played a big part in combat being the go-to rogue spec at the time, even finding its way to the BlizzCon final. Outlaw Rogues using Guile Charm as their legendary will cycle through a green, yellow and then red buff giving them 10, 20 and 30% damage buffs. You'll simply have to keep an eye on the Outlaw Rogues buffs to know if they're playing with this legendary and then be prepared to either crowd control or trade defenses with the Outlaw Rogue during their red buff to minimize the amount of damage they do to your team. The other legendary that Outlaw Rogues may use is Greenskin's Wickers. This allows them to hit really hard with a pistol shot whenever they use between the eyes every 45 seconds. So if you notice an Outlaw Rogue is not getting a Gal Charm buff, be prepared for huge burst every time between the eyes is ready. Finally, we have Doomblade, which will just let Assassination Rogues hit pretty hard with Envenom during their burst. Overall, it won't impact your matchups against Assassination Rogues too much, but during Vendetta, it will make their burst quite deadly, so make sure you're ready to play around or trade cooldowns with Vendetta against Assassination Rogues. Next up, Druids have a ton of viable legendaries, so there's going to be a lot to look out for. Starting with the general ones, Draught of Deep Focus has the potential to make Feral Druids deal incredibly high single target pressure. There is not much you can do to counter this, but if you notice a Feral Druid is only keeping beads on one target, it's likely they're using this legendary. Next we have Circle of Life and Death, which is looking to have a lot of potential, but only if Ferals and Boomkins have enough globals to keep getting their dots out, and Resto Druids don't quickly go out of mana from having to recast their hots more frequently. Druids using this legendary will benefit the most from having a lot of uptime, as they'll need as many globals as possible to make the most of it, so you may want to consider keeping them locked down more often. The last general legendary that's looking to be powerful is Oath of the Elder Druid. This will allow druids to make their affinities significantly more potent, and is especially potent with Guardian Affinity, making druids much harder to kill. So, if you notice a druid gain Heart of the Wild when they shift into bear form, be prepared to put in more effort than usual to score a kill on them. Next, Feral Druids have a handful of legendaries that can all see use in PvP. Apex Predator's Craving is looking to be a decent increase to Feral single target damage, while also letting them quickly apply Ferocious Wound during a setup with Maim if they get lucky with the proc. Cat Eye Curio will make it much easier for Ferals to keep up dots on multiple targets, and Frenzy Band will make Incarnation a stronger cooldown while also reducing its CD. There isn't much you can do to counter the first two, but with Frenzy Band, you can at least be prepared to deal with more damage than usual during Incarn, while also being aware that it can be used more frequently than normal. Balanced Druids would likely all use Primordial Arcanic Pulsar, a legendary that's based on a BFA Azerite trait that Balanced Druids always used. All you'll have to do here is keep an eye on the Balanced Druids buffs and prepare for incoming bursts every time they reach 4 stacks. Resto Druids are lucky to have two incredibly strong legendaries to choose from. Verdant Infusion allows Resto Druids to extend the duration of their hots, and since they've got an overgrowth as a baseline talent, they're able to apply all hots to a target with one spell and then instantly extend their duration by 10 seconds, freeing them to either spend less mana, heal others, or spend more time playing offensive. Now while Verdant Infusion lets Resto Druids heal one target more efficiently, the Dark Titan's Lesson allows Resto Druids to more easily keep up with multi-target pressure by keeping Life Bloom up on two targets. The best way to handle these legendaries is likely to opt for a more aggressive approach to single target or split pressure depending on which the druid is using. So if you notice life bloom up on two targets, you may want to focus more on single target pressure. Whereas if you notice hots that last for upwards of 20 seconds, you should instead try to force the druid to heal multiple targets by spreading your pressure. Moving on to monks, rollout is the only general legendary which may see use and is likely just for misweaver monks that spec into Chi Torpedo. This will make it extremely difficult to train misweaver monks that are playing with this legendary. So if you ever notice a misweaver monk roll an ungodly amount of times back to back, you should probably reconsider trying to stick to them. Mistweaver Monks also have two other legendaries which are looking to be incredibly strong. Clouded Focus will let Mistweaver Monks both increase their single target healing while also reducing their mana cost. This will make whoever a Mistweaver Monk is pumping heals into pretty much unkillable, so don't expect to ever burst through the healing of a Mistweaver Monk channeling Soothing Mist if they're playing with this legendary. Tear of Morning on the other hand is looking to be great for increasing a Mistweaver Monk's AoE healing, so if Mistweaver Monks are applying the Extend Life buff to their team, you'll know they're prepared to outheal spread pressure, so you'll want to consider focusing more on single target pressure. Windwalker monks only have one legendary that's looking to make a strong impact in PvP, Kiefer Skyrage. It gives their Tiger Palm a 10 yard range and dashes them to their target, along with the crit buff every 30 seconds. 
There's not much you can do to counter this, but just don't be surprised if you see a Windwalker monk all over you and being unkiteable. Next up, Demon Hunters have unfortunately gotten the short end of the stick with their selection of legendaries. The only legendary that's looking to be worthy of use in PvP is Dark Lair Medallion. This gives Demon Hunters the potential to use multiple I beams back to back to RNG their way to 20 plus seconds of metamorphosis outside of their actual big meta. There isn't much you can do about this, but just be prepared to continue seeing Demon Hunters spend upwards of a minute in metamorphosis if they get lucky. Now, let's take a look at mages who have several viable legendaries to choose from. Grisly Icicle is the only general legendary worth looking at. It's also not too strong for arcane and fire mages, but is very powerful for frost mages. By combining this legendary with Lonely Winter, Chain Reaction, and potentially even Splitting Ice if you're looking to cleave, you can do absurd amounts of damage. Also, currently on the beta it's not breaking to a Frost Mage's teammate's damage. However, assuming this gets fixed, it's likely this legendary will only see use in World PvP and 2s. As for the Frost Mage specific legendaries, Freezing Winds is looking to be the primary pick. Ice Lance hits really hard, and most of a Frost Mage's damage during their kill windows comes from Ice Lance. So being able to consistently reduce the cooldown of Frozen Orb to set up more frequent kill attacks will make Frost Mages very threatening in Arena. The only way you can deal with this is to try and prevent a mage from spamming Frost Bolts in between their Frozen Orbs. Now while Freezing Wind is likely to be taken in setup based comps like Rogue Mage, Cold Front may be the optimal pick when playing Caustic Leaves such as Mage Lock. Not only is the requirement cut down to 7 in PvP, but because Flurry hits multiple times, this cuts down the number of globals required to trigger this even more. Unfortunately, it's currently not working when paired with the PvP talent Concentrated Coolness, which most Frost Mages rely on for accurate orb placement. So unless the bug is fixed, which prevents Cold Front from triggering while Mages are using Concentrated Coolness, we probably won't see this being used in PvP unless Frost Mages are willing to drop Concentrated Coolness, which they may consider when facing melee cleaves. As for countering this, well, if you see a Frost Mage constantly sending out frozen orbs, you should avoid stacking as much as possible to prevent them from cleaving down your team. Arcane has one legendary that's looking strong in PvP, Arcane Harmony. It provides them with a flat 10% increase to their most consistent source of damage while also building up a buff to their burst damage. This buff actually stacks up to 100 times, which is a 200% increase in damage to their Arcane Barrage. Now, it takes a really long time to stack this up, so Arcane Mages are unlikely to ever stack this to 100, but either way, just keep an eye on their buffs to know if a hard hitting Arcane Barrage is on the way. Fire, on the other hand, doesn't really have any strong legendaries to choose from. Their best pick is seemingly Firestorm, but the proc rate is so low that they're unlikely to get much value out of it. Regardless, just keep an eye out for the Firestorm buff to know when a Fire Mage gets what's basically a stronger version of Combustion. Moving on to our penultimate class, Warlocks have a handful of legendaries which are looking to perform well in PvP. Starting with their general ones, Pillars of the Dark Portal will give Warlocks incredible mobility. Not only have they gotten Demonic Circle back as a baseline spell, but combining that with this legendary will probably make Warlocks one of the hardest casters to stick to as a melee, a complete 180 from how they've been throughout BFA. So if you ever notice a Warlock put down a gate without casting it, you'll know that it's probably not worth trying to tunnel them as a melee. The only other general legendary that's looking good is Claw of Endereth, and mostly for Affliction Warlocks when paired with Inevitable Demise. This makes Drain Life burst super hot in a very short amount of time, and will allow Affliction Warlocks to set up extremely deadly kill windows against some comps. Now I say against some comps because Inevitable Demise is a dispellable magic buff, which means that if you see an Affliction Warlock stacking this up, make sure your team offensively dispels it. The only other legendary that Affliction Warlocks will want to consider, and will probably want to use in most comps, is Sacralash's Dark Strike. This makes their Corruption Dot apply a 60% snare, which will likely open up a ton of comp opportunities for Affliction Warlocks as they'll essentially be able to keep up a powerful slow on the entire enemy team at all times. This is yet another one of those legendaries with no real counter outside of Dispelling, but at least now you'll know why you're snared so heavily against an Affliction Warlock. Destra only has one legendary that's looking good, and due to the low haste early in the expansion, this will probably be Destra's primary pick, and will allow them to hit relatively hard with the second of two Chaos Bolts every time they build up four shards, but only if they're able to cast two back to back. So, if you see a Destra Wallet getting this buff after casting a single Chaos Bolt, be sure to prevent them from ever casting two Chaos Bolts back to back to completely waste the proc. And much like BM Hunters, the other spec which focuses on playing around a ton of pets also lacks any strong legendaries, so we won't be highlighting any Demonology Warlock legendaries. The final class we'll be looking at is Priest, and they've got a couple general legendaries that you need to look out for. First, there's Vault of the Heavens, which reverses the way Leap of Faith works, allowing Priests to grip to their teammates instead of gripping their teammates to them, making it strong both offensively and defensively. Holy Priest can even combine this with the PvP talent delivered from Evil to make their mobility really strong, but Disc and Shadow Priest can still benefit from this legendary. It's an excellent tool for land and unexpected fears, so be on the lookout for Priests using this, and prepare to not only stop the Priest from reaching the target they want to fear, but potentially their teammates too. 
The other general legendary to look out for is Measured Contemplation. This will mostly see use on Shadow Priests and is super strong as it allows them to pretty much heal an entire health bar with one Shadow Mend when it's stacked to 4. Holy Priests have one pretty strong legendary they can use and that's Benedictus. It's essentially a cheat death and will allow them to come back to life when killed. So if you're looking to kill the Holy Priest in order to win the game, be prepared to have to kill them twice or perhaps reconsider your kill target altogether. Next, many Disc Priests are likely to be using Crystalline Reflection. It gives them an instant heal whenever they apply their shield and also reflects 30% of the damage absorbed. This plays into the damage dealing nature of Disc Priests, while also making it easier for them to keep their teammates alive while moving. The only real counterplay here is to make more use of offensive dispels to prevent the reflected damage. And the only other legendary discs may want to consider using is the Pentinent one. This is going to come down to whether or not Radiant ends up being an efficient heal and will need to be paired with the PvP talent Ultimate Radiance. It allows Disc Priests to more easily keep their team topped with an instant cost while going for harder hitting penances thanks to the three additional bolts. Now if we find that playing with Ultimate Radiance in order to make use of this legendary offensively makes Disc Priest oom faster, you'll just want to play around that fact and work to oom the Priest while focusing more on defensive play. And finally we arrive at Shadow Priests, the spec that's looking to be the most promising in all of Shadowlands. The recent redesign has seen them rise to the top as one of the best specs in the game, and they've got two legendaries which are looking to be pretty strong in PvP. Shadowflame Prism will allow SPs to more frequently add to their burst damage during setups without needing to cast. This can be quite important as Shadow Priests only have one school of magic to deal damage with while also lacking a ton of instant burst damage. All you need to do here is look out for an SP's Shadow Fiend or Mindbender, which will likely be dealing a lot more damage than usual, especially if paired with the Rabid Shadows conduit. And finally, we arrive at Talbadar's Stratagem, named after the legendary Shadow Priest Talbadar. Much like Shadow Flame Prism, this will increase an SP's burst potential during setups and will be especially potent whenever they get a Dark Thoughts proc to cast an instant Mind Blast while channeling Mind Flay. The best way to counter this legendary is to interrupt Mind Flay if an SP is channeling it with a ton of dots up, but you're most likely better off just preventing those VTs in the first place. Okay everyone, hopefully you stuck around throughout this entire guide and picked up a ton of information you can use to get ahead at the start of Season 1 in Shadowlands. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.